Hello students, we are proceeding further in atomic structure. Today I am taking electrical nature of matter. What do we mean by electrical nature of matter? Firstly, I am making you clear what is matter. I know that you all are knowing that matter is anything which occupies space and has mass. How can we say that it shows electrical nature? Suppose the scale I am taking. If I ask you that whether it is matter, you will say yes. If I rub this scale over our hairs, it acquires charge over it. One of the charge is getting rubbed off and that's why it becomes charged. So, it is developing electrical nature over it. According to Faraday, electricity is made up of particles called atoms of electricity. And later, these atoms of electricity were termed as electrons. So, as we have taken the term electron, we are now taking discovery of electron. That was done by J.J. Thomson. For the discovery of electron, he took a cylindrical thick glass tube fitted with two electrodes, cathode and anode negatively charged cathode and this positive is anode okay through vacuum pump vacuum is created inside this discharge tube and that electrodes are connected with high volt current 10,000 volt high volt current was passed in this discharge tube, some gas is filled, but it was observed that no current was flowing inside the discharge tube. Because I know that you are knowing that gases are bad conductor of electricity. But gases are bad conductor at atmospheric pressure. If we reduce the pressure, at that time, gases becomes conducting in nature. So, the pressure is reduced up to 10 raised to the power minus 4 atmosphere. At that time, it is observed that in front of the cathode, on the walls of discharge tube, faint green colored glow was seen, was observed. How this glow was observed, that I am telling you students. Some rays are generating out from cathode. And that rays as they are travelling towards positive electrode that is anode, that rays strike to the walls of this discharge tube also. Thus making that walls hotter and that's why that wall start glowing with some faint green color. This glow is called fluorescence. So fluorescence is observed in front of cathode on the walls of discharge tube. J.J. Thompson named that rays which were coming out from the surface of cathode as cathode rays. Now we are studying the properties of cathode rays. First property of cathode rays is they travel in straight line. How can we say that cathode rays travel in straight line? When a shadow is placed in the path of cathode rays, they cast its shadow just behind the object. This proves that cathode rays have tendency to travel in straight line. Next property of cathode rays is Cathode rays are made up of material particles. Material particles? Energy particles. How can we say this? When in the path of cathode rays, a paddle wheel is kept. That paddle wheel starts rotating. As the cathode rays are striking to that paddle wheel, that wheel start rotating. This proves that cathode rays are having energy particles in them, material particles in them. 
Is it clear? So, next I am taking is cathode rays are having negative charge on them. They are made up of negatively charged particles. How can we say like this? So if we provide electrical field across this discharge tube, it was observed that cathode rays get deflected towards positive field. If the rays are bending towards positive field, definitely they are carrying which charge? Negative. So this proves that cathode rays are bearing negative charge. Next property is cathode rays produces heating effect. They are striking to any surface. The surface becomes hot. That's why we can say that cathode rays produce heating effect. Like they are striking with the metallic surface, that metallic surface becomes hot. A next property, they can pass through thin foil of metals. That means they are having high penetration power. Next is, they have tendency to ionize the gases. Ionize the gases meaning, suppose if I am taking hydrogen gas, it breaks into positive and negative charge. Electrons move out, leaving behind positive charge. So, these cathode rays are having high penetration power. They have tendency to ionize the gases. They have tendency to produce heating effect. Next property is, they affect photographic plate. Now, what is the meaning of this? Suppose, if we are coating any metallic surface or any surface with zinc sulfide and the cathode rays are striking to that plate, they produce their impression on them. So it is called, they are affecting photographic plate. They are associated with light. They produce some effect. So we are saying that they produce photograph. They affect photographic plate. So these are the properties of cathode rays friends we are studying. Now we are taking what charge is present on cathode rays or by which particles that cathode rays are made up of. J.J. Thompson concluded that the particles by which cathode rays are made up of are electrons. In this way, electrons were discovered by this discharge tube experiment. And what is the charge present on electron? What is the mass present on electron? One experiment was performed by R.A. Millikan and the experiment name was oil drop experiment. I am not taking that experiment still, but I am telling you the charge on the electron and that is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs. It is negative. Negative 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs. And this is the charge, minimum charge which can be measured first. That's why it is called unit negative charge. And the mass of electron is 9.1 into 10 to the power minus 31 kg. And this mass is considered as negligible mass. So we can define electron as electron is a fundamental particle having unit negative charge. Unit meaning minimum charge which can be measured. Unit negative charge and negligible mass or we can say the mass of electron is about 1 by 1837th of the hydrogen atom. Itna kam hota hydrogen atom se bhi mass and that's why we are taking mass of electron as negligible mass. Okay. One more thing students, as we have generated electrons in this discharge tube by providing high volt current and low pressure condition, electron can also be generated by heating metal filament. As we have studied that metals are electropositive in nature, they lose electron readily. So when metals are heated, they also eject out electrons from them. 
Similarly, you have studied radioactivity, radioactive rays, alpha, beta, gamma. So radioactive elements in the form of beta radiation emit out electrons. Beta radiations are made up of electrons only. So we have covered discovery of electron, discovery of cathode rays, properties of cathode rays, mass on electron and the charge of on electron. Now I am taking discovery of proton. Anode rays because anode rays are made up of proton. Like cathode rays are made up of electron. Anode rays are made up of protons. These anode rays were discovered by Goldstein. Pro anode rays were discovered by Gold he also performed the same type of experiment by taking this discharge tube, cylindrical discharge tube made up of thick glass. He also put it, he also put two electrodes, cathode and anode. High volt current was provided at low pressure, why low pressure? For making the gases conducting. He filled hydrogen gas in this discharge tube. Through vacuum pump, he created vacuum first and then he filled hydrogen gas. The only one difference was there in Goldstein's discharge tube. He took perforated cathode, cathode which were having holes in it. Holes were there in the cathode, perforated cathode he took. In this experiment also, he observed that some dark colored glow was obtained on the walls of the discharge tube at the back side of cathode. We can say here students like in cathode rays the rays which were generating out from the surface were termed as cathode rays so here we can say that the rays which will be generating from anode they will be anode rays but nothing was like that. How these anode rays were producing I am telling you students, as you have done that uh, cathode rays have tendency to ionize gases. They break gases into ions. So what is happening? As we are taking here two electrodes, cathode and anode, cathode surface is ejecting out cathode rays from it. As the cathode rays are moving towards anode, they take all the electrons of the gas filled in the discharge tube because cathode rays have tendency to ionize the gases. So on ionization what we are getting negative and positive charges. So these cathode rays are taking electron of the gas with them towards anode leaving behind what? Positive particles. Here the positive particles will be left and that positive recharged particles start moving towards negative electrode that is cathode and through perforations they pass through and more and more number of particles are striking with this surface and that's why here dark colored glow in comparison to this one is obtained. So we can say how the anode rays generating anode rays are generating when the electron of the gas filled in the discharge tube are getting knocked off. Nikal jate hain. K-N-O-C-K-E-D. Knocked off. O double F. So when the electrons get knocked off leaving behind positively charged particle that positively charged particle start moving towards cathode and after passing through the perforation, they are striking to the surface of walls of discharge tube. So in this way, Goldstein termed that radiations as anode rays and he concluded that anode rays are also made up of positively charged particles and he named that particles as proton. So Goldstein discovered protons. Here, he studied the properties of anode rays also and the, he found that 
properties of anode rays are also same like cathode rays. Anode rays also travel in straight line. We can take this same experiment. They cast shadow of the object just behind it. Anode rays are also made up of particles. They are having energy particles in them. Same experiment students. We'll start rotating. When the electrical or magnetic field is provided, these anode rays start bending towards negative field. That shows that anode rays are bearing positive charge. And when the charge was calculated, it was same 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19, but in positive. It is plus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19. So we can say that protons have unit positive charge. Electrons have unit negative charge. So protons have unit positive charge and the mass of proton is 1.67 into 10 to the power minus 27 kg or we can say it is same as hydrogen atom. So mass of hydrogen atom is equal to the proton or we can say ionized hydrogen gas are the proton particles. If instead of hydrogen gas some other gas is filled in that case the mass comes out in the whole number multiple of this quantity. Hydrogen being the lightest gas. So if hydrogen gas we are taking, the mass is coming 1.67 into 10 to the power minus 27 of proton. But if any other gas is filled, then it will be the whole number multiple of this quantity. And remember, so this quantity is the least quantity which can be measured. Isse kam quantity ko measure nahi kar sakte. So that's why this is the least quantity which can be measured. is called unit mass. So how can we define proton now? Same as electron. Here we can say fundamental particles having unit. This time we will say positive charge. And have mass equal to hydrogen atom. Or we can say and have unit mass in it. So, we have done today discovery of electrons and discovery of proton. Do it students and if you have any problem in that, you can ask me. Okay students, remain safe. Thank you.